Come near ye nations to hear and hearken ye people. Let the earth hear and all that is therein, the world and all things that come forth of it. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations and his fury upon all their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter at the woe of the seventh trumpet in the battles of Armageddon and Haman Gog. And just beforehand, Satan's fallen angel locust army gets destroyed in the earthquake you can read of in Revelation 11. 1113. Their slain also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses, and the mountain shall be melted with their blood. The mountain shall flow with their blood, so to speak, being a better translation. And again, this is written to the earth and all that is therein. And the seven mountains we see in Revelation chapter 17 verse 9 are the seven continents. And all flesh gets destroyed when the true Christ returns two and a half months after Satan appears as the Antichrist in Jerusalem. And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, and all their hosts shall fall down, as the leaf falleth off from the vine, and as a falling fig from the fig tree. Most Christians will die spiritually at 666, being then grafted into Satan's family tree, along with the Kenites, who are the natural branches thereof, and they'll then be counted as evil figs unless they repent before the seventh angel sounds. That's when the generation of the fig tree that began in 1948 when Kenite occupied Israel came into being ends and the thousand year long day of the Lord begins. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumea and upon the people of my curse to judgment. Idumea being Edom, which means red, called also Gog in Ezekiel 38. The chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, who along with the rest of the Ezekiel 38 confederacy make up the bear of Daniel chapter 7, but on a deeper level you could say that Edom is symbolic of the flesh, while Jacob is symbolic of the spiritual bodies of those who don't take part in the first resurrection because they'll have to become Israel, so to speak, in order to go into the eternity. So all who take part in the first resurrection are Israel. Everyone else from that point forward become Jacob at that time and must become Israel once again as all were in the first world age, symbolized by the woman with a crown of 12 stars in Revelation chapter 12 verse 1. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood, it is made fat with fatness, and with the blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of the kidneys of rams, for the Lord hath the sacrifice in Basra, in a great slaughter in the land of Idumea. All flesh gets destroyed when the true Christ returns, and the sword that proceeds out of his mouth is what kills the flesh of those still part of the lion, the bear, and the leopard at that time, as you can see in Revelation chapter 19, verse 21. Daniel's fourth beast gets destroyed completely, which is made up of Satan's angels, that is to say the fallen angel locust army, including those ten fallen angel kings, as well as the four angels loose from the Euphrates at the woe of the sixth trumpet. When Satan appears in his role of Antichrist, which gets destroyed at the seventh trumpet as well, called the false prophet in Revelation chapter 19 verse 20, and the unicorns, better translated wild oxen, shall come down with them and the bullocks with the bulls, because all flesh gets destroyed at that time, and their land shall be soaked with blood, and their dust made fat with fatness. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance, the thousand-year-long great tribulation, and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. And the streams thereof, of Edom, that is to say, shall be turned into pitch, and the dust thereof into brimstone, and the land thereof shall become burning pitch, not just the destruction of communistic atheism, but the permanent destruction of the flesh bodies also. Esau only cared about his own flesh, selling his birthright for a bowl of red pottage, which is when he began to be called Edom, which means red. But Jacob became Israel, which is symbolic of resurrecting into eternal life through the Lord Jesus Christ, who himself is called Israel, as you can see in Isaiah chapter 49. It shall not be quenched night or day, the smoke thereof shall go up forever, from generation to generation it shall lie waste, none shall pass through it 
it forever and ever. Again, the permanent destruction of all flesh at the seventh trumpet. But the cormorant and the bittern shall possess it, the owl also, and the raven shall dwell in it, and he shall stretch out upon it the line of confusion and the stones of emptiness, the line of desolation being better translated. They shall call the nobles thereof to the kingdom, but none shall be there, and all her princes shall be nothing, with all flesh being destroyed at that time, and the dominion being taken away from the bear, as well as the dominion of the lion and the leopard. No more hidden dynasty of politics, as we saw back in chapters 15 and 16, with the burden of Moab, who you'll see listed with Edom, along with Ammon, repeatedly throughout the Bible, because they're all part of the same hidden dynasty, the hidden dynasty of politics. Ammon and Moab being symbolic of the left-right paradigm worldwide, and again, Edom means red, as in that red nation used by the Kenites to bring about global communism in the New World Order, as it's called, at the woe of the fifth trumpet. It'll be like a leopard, the Kenites in their four hidden dynasties, that is to say, with the mouth of a lion and the feet of a bear, having ten horns, which are those ten fallen angel kings who are part of Daniel's fourth beast. And thorns shall come up in her palaces, nettles and brambles, in the fortresses thereof it shall be an habitation of dragons and a court for owls, jackals, not dragons, these being animals you'd find in a desert place, and this is God using poetry to make the point that Edom will cease to be when the seventh angel sounds and the silver cord is loose for all mankind, which Edom is ultimately symbolic of. That's when everyone either becomes Jacob or Israel, so to speak, counted as either good figs or evil figs, as you can see in Jeremiah chapter 24. The wild beasts of the desert shall also meet with the wild beasts of the island, and the satyr shall cry to his fellow, and this word translated as satyr is first seen in Genesis 27 11 when Jacob is speaking of Esau. That word hairy is number 8163 in your Hebrew dictionary of your Strong's Concordance translated as satyr in the 14th verse of Isaiah chapter 34. The screech owl also shall rest there and find for herself a place of rest. Again, these are creatures you would find in a desert place, a poetic way of saying flesh man, which Edom is symbolic of, will be destroyed at the seventh trumpet forever and ever. There shall the great owl make her nest and lay and hatch and gather under her shadow. There shall the vultures also be gathered, every one with her mate. And after those still part of the lion, bear, and leopard are slain by the sword that proceeds out of the mouth of the true Christ, whose name is called the Word of God, all the fowls will be filled with their flesh. And as you can see in the fourth verse of Ezekiel chapter 39, God says to Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, that he and all his multitude will be given unto the ravenous birds of every sort and to the beasts of the field to be devoured. You won't need anyone to tell you that Christ has returned, because when the true Christ returns, all flesh will be destroyed. As lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be, as Christ says in Matthew 24, where he also says, For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the vultures be gathered together. To properly translate Matthew 24, verse 28, it's not eagles there, but vultures, and again, there shall the vultures also be gathered, every one with their mate. Seek ye out the book of the Lord, and read, No one of these shall fail, none shall want her mate, for my mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit it hath gathered them, and he cast the lot for them, and his hand hath divided it unto them by line, they shall possess it forever, from generation to generation shall they dwell therein. These animals of the desert, so to speak, because again, this is God using poetic imagery to make the point that this time of the flesh will end, symbolized by the destruction of Edom, which at the same time symbolizes the destruction of the governments of the world, which were controlled by the Kenites up to the point when all the world became part of the seven-headed political system at the woe of the fifth trumpet and then after the deadly wound part of the seven-headed religious system it will become at the woe of the sixth trumpet when satan appears as the antichrist and then two and a half months later at the woe of the seventh trumpet the true christ will return as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west which is when all are changed into spiritual bodies edom which is symbolic of flesh man ceasing to be at that time when all go into the millennium is either 
under Jacob or Israel, evil figs, which means those who don't take part in the first resurrection, as opposed to the good figs who will become the millennial priesthood at that time, and all who fail to become Israel also after the thousand years are finished and choose to follow Satan again will get blotted out of existence in the lake of fire, while everyone else having become Israel, so to speak, in either the first or the second resurrection go into the eternity, which is the third world age. As you can see pointed out in the Companion Bible, Isaiah chapter 35 is the sequel to this long series of burdens and woes and sets forth the future return of Israel, which means all who take part in the first or the second resurrection into eternal life. The wilderness here is the land of Edom referred to in Isaiah chapter 34 verses 9 through 16. While Edom becomes a waste, the land becomes a paradise and the way of the return thither a peaceful highway. Speaking of the transition from the flesh bodies into the spiritual at the woe of the seventh trumpet, and then after the thousand years are finished, the entry into the true promised land, which is the eternity, when all will be Israel once again as it was in the first world age. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it the excellency of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as an heart and the tongue of the dumb sing, for in the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert, and the parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water in the habitation of dragons, jackals being better translated, where each lay shall be grass with reeds and rushes, and an highway shall be there in a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness, Christ Jesus being the way, the truth, and the life, having returned as King of kings and Lord of lords at the woe of the seventh trumpet, when the day of the Lord begins. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those the wayfaring men, though fools, shall not err therein. No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon, because all flesh will be done away with. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And you could even look at this as saying the lion of Daniel chapter 7 will be done away with at the seventh trumpet, along with the bear and the leopard, with their lives being prolonged for a season and a time, the time being the thousand years and the season being that little season where Satan is let loose from the bottomless pit when all who follow him again at that time get cast into the lake of fire and the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads and they shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sign shall flee away and either the first or the second resurrection when all become Israel again as all were in the first world age.